Okay, so I'm coming up on the first 600 miles of my Honda 2020 Rebel 500. Now, is this 600 mile service something that you gotta bring into a dealer to be taken care of, or is this something you could do yourself at home? Well, that's what we're gonna do in today's video. We're gonna go over and perform a complete 600 mile service on this bike, so hang in there. All right, thanks for tuning in everyone. I'm Joe, and this is gonna be the first time I'm changing the oil on a motorcycle. I've changed oil plenty of times on cars, snowblowers, generators, lawnmowers, you know, whatever. It's basically the same concept. You've got a drain plug, you've got an oil filter. Oil filter is very similar to a car on this bike. If you've ever um, changed oil on a car, then you'll be right at home, you'll feel really comfortable with this. I'm gonna go over step-by-step, step, go over the tools that you're gonna need, um, the supplies you're gonna need, and we'll go through this really slow and go through the whole process. It shouldn't take long and it's quick and easy. If you've never done this before, hopefully this video helps. There's other videos out there as well, but it's really not a hard process. So let's go through what we're gonna need. First. So some things we're gonna need. We're gonna need oil, not just any oil. Make sure you get motorcycle oil because you do have a wet clutch in here and regular oil will mess up your clutch. So make sure you get motorcycle grade oil. I'm using genuine Honda 10W3 motor oil. This takes 2.9 quarts. I got three quarts. You're also gonna need motorcycle filter. You're gonna need an oil wrench. This will help tremendously getting it off. Rubber gloves, these help too. Keep your fingers nice and clean. But they also do help in case you don't have an oil wrench. There's times I've actually taken the oil filter off just by putting on some uh, latex gloves, rubber gloves, and just you know, grill in that, that filter and getting it off. And you'll need a filter. I bought a kit. The kit came with the three quarts oil, came with the, the filter, came with a little paper funnel, and they even gave you the crush washer taped to the filter. So this little kit, I'll put the link in the description, give you everything you need. You will also need a catch pan to catch oil in, and some tin foil, which I'll go over and explain why you're gonna need some tin foil, unless you like oil spilling all over your, your pipes. All right, as you can see, I've got 555 miles on the bike, just shy of 600. I didn't wanna to wait to 600, because I'm gonna take the bike to work tomorrow, and I didn't wanna go over the 600, which my commute to work would have done, but one of the things you wanna do first is warm up the bike. Let it run for two to three minutes, bring it inside or wherever, shut it down, let it cool for another two, three minutes, and then you can work on it, get the oil nice and warm, so it flows out nice and easy. Now the thing you don't need but makes extremely helpful is a jack stand. This is a regular paddock stand. This goes on the back of the bike, lifts it up, keeps it straight. Um, on the Honda Rebel 500, I do have an aftermarket exhaust, so this does clear it. If you do have the stock exhaust, you may have to remove the exhaust for the stand to go underneath. So let's jack this bike up. All right, so here's the oil drain plug. It is 12 millimeter. Kind of helps if you have an extension on here. There it goes. Crush washer that I mentioned before. So we're just gonna let this guy drain and do its thing. All right, well, well that continues to drip. It looks like it's still got a little couple left to go. I did install the new crush washer on here. And I'm looking at my chain right now because that's what we're gonna do after the oil change. We'll, we'll go over um, cleaning and re-lubing the chain and also check the, uh, the tightness of it. Make sure it's still within spec. Uh, my chain actually looks really clean, <laughs> but I will clean it anyway, just for the video, but all right, well, it looks, looks like we're just about good. I'm gonna put this guy back. Now, I know in the manual, the specs, I wanna say 17 foot-pounds of torque on this guy. I never, when I do oil drain plugs, I never put a torque wrench on it. I always just snug tight it. Um, you know, especially on the motorcycle, this, you could see it very easily. So if it's leaking, you could tell, but I don't like making them tight. I don't wanna strip them. So I just make it nice and snug. All right, so this is what I was telling you about where you wanna use some tin foil. I just put it up in here, watch how these pipes might still be hot. Just do that so when it does come running out, it just goes right down into the pan. So here I'm gonna use my oil filter wrench. I wonder if you can, nah, I can't do it by hand. I got my own fill wrench. There we go. Not much, it's not too tight. 
there goes the oil. Nice going down the tin foil, not going down on my pipes. Now I also, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I always take the oil filler plug cap off too. Actually, I don't take it off all the way, just loosen it and uh, you know, just leave it there this way. You get good airflow and all the oil comes out. All right, so that looks like it's pretty much done. Next, you just wanna take a clean rag and just go around the surface. You wanna make sure that's a nice, clean surface, no debris on there for your oil filter. Um, we also, I got some oil here. Which we're just gonna take and rub around the outer ring. This way it slides on nice. And we just screw this on. Like I said, I don't make this super tight, hand tight is all you really need. Also just wipe up anything. Make sure nothing goes and drips on your pipes. All right, adding oil. This part's fairly simple. Here's the oil filler cap that I was talking about before. Like I said, I just had it loose for the time being. Let the air flow. I don't like keeping it uncovered too long because, you know, you don't want any debris getting in there. Scrap that. That doesn't even fit in there. And it takes 2.9 quarts. Well, this way you don't get the gurgles. There you go. Get a little splash there. I'm going to say that's about 2.9. And you're going to take your filler cap, make sure it's nice and clean, make sure your o ring is still there around it. And voila, oil change done. Quick visual on the sight glass, and it looks like it, I don't know if we get the camera in there close enough, but we are at the full line, and the bike is straight up. So that looks pretty good. All right, so now that we've got the oil done, um, moving on to the chain. And the chain, they say, for the free play, should be about one and a quarter, anywhere from like one and a quarter inch. I think the manual even says one and three eighth inch, but I'm going by what it says right here on the swing arm. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, swing arm. So easiest way to do it, I actually have some boards down here. You can probably see on the other camera. I have some boards down here, just have the bike lifted up and this ruler's not long enough. So. There we go. If I have it up like this, and I'm like right in the middle, I'm just at about, let's see what the play, about four and three quarters. Yeah, it's about four and three quarters. I don't know if that camera could pick it up, because that's leaning, uh, that's pointing up, but we're at about four and three quarters. I'm gonna lift up, I'm about three and three quarters. So, about an inch, maybe a little bit more. So, chain is definitely good. I don't need to, if anything, it might even need to be loosened a little bit, but still, that's gonna stretch a little. At least it's not too loose where you have to tighten it. So we're still within specs. I'm about, yeah, it's about an inch. So that's fine. It'll actually stretch out even more as I, I need to ride. But chain looks good. If you did need to adjust it, which that'll be for another video, but basically you would get the light over here. The axle nut on the other side you would loosen, and this loosens this whole axle going through here. Then you would loosen these lock nuts. You got one on each side, and then you've got an Allen key in there, and you would hold it and spin it, and you see those little markers. Oh, I can't hold the light in this at the same time. These little markers you would make the chain either tighter or looser depending on which way you need to go. And you wanna do it even on both sides. That's why they got those little dashes there. So whatever you do on this side, you do on the other side. But we don't have to do that. So let's get to cleaning. All right, so to clean the chain, I'm just using plain old kerosene. They make chain cleaner that you can buy. You wanna make sure you buy something that's safe for O-rings. Kerosene is, it's been, you know, Tested a million times. A lot of people use it for uh, cleaning chains. I just put this little piece of cardboard back here so I don't spray it all over my tires. And I've got this little wire, not wire brush, it's a nylon brush that I'm just gonna use for cleaning the chain. My chain's actually in very good shape, so there's really not much I'm gonna have to do to it. So we're just gonna spray it down and get a little spray here. Just gonna do like a little section at a time.
I'm gonna make sure you get the top and the bottom. So of course you wanna make sure the bike is in neutral so you can spin it. Um, this of course is the reason why a stand is great because you could stand the bike up and put it in neutral and spin the wheel. Otherwise, imagine trying to do this, you know, in your driveway, spraying a little at a time, rolling the bike, spray a little time, roll. That would kind of be annoying. Now, as tempting as this may be, you never want to do this with the bike running, putting it in gear. I've heard of stories of people doing that, which is kind of ridiculous. Getting your hands caught in there. That's a world of trouble right there. All right, so there we go. Chain is nice and clean. Next thing we're gonna do is lube it up. All right, so now that we got the chain all nice and clean, I'm using this Motul chain paste, Modal, Motul, however you want to say it. Um, I know people have used regular gear oil, there's all sorts of stuff you can use. I chose this because it seems to be middle of the road. You know, there's things that are, you know, they say gear oil works really well, but then it splatters everywhere and it makes a big mess. And there's other ones you could use. Um, Fortnite did a great comparison with a whole bunch of ones, and this was one of the ones they did. This was, was like kind of middle of the road the entire time. It was never like great, but it was never bad. Been all the different categories from, you know, effectiveness to, you know, lube to staying on the chain to flinging off. It did really well. Um, like I said, it was kind of like the middle of the road the whole time. So that's why I chose this. And basically, you just got this brush applicator. You squeeze. I don't know, do I have to break the seal? Probably. Right. It'd be nice if I read instructions. Squeeze. There you go, you can see it's starting to come out. And let me just put it on. Tight chain. Get underneath. 600 miles. They say you should do it every five to 600 miles, which this is easy, cleaning the chain. Uh, oil, I think the next one, I think the manual even says 6,000, but, uh, you know, I'd probably do 4,000, maybe even 3,000, depending on, you know, how I felt, or once a year, I would think, maybe even, we'll see, I don't know, I'm new at this. Flip around to the other side, I, which I can... Chain is done. And lastly, I just want to clean the brush. All right, guys, so that's about going to wrap it up for doing the 600 mile service on a Rebel 500. This is a 2020. It's pretty much the same for the other models as well, uh, except that 300, 300 does have a little bit different of an oil filter. So look that up if you have a 300. But is this something you need to bring to a dealer to be done or is this something you do at home? As you can see, it really wasn't that hard. Uh, I think anyone with basic tools can do it at home. Only thing you may need is an oil filter wrench. Um, you know, if you have sockets, that's great. And the paddock stand really does help because it helps when it's, helps keeping the bike upright and it also helps when you clean the chain because you know otherwise you can't spin that back tire to you know get to the different parts of the chain. So a couple basic tools, a couple specialty tools. If not, you know you can work your way around it. But other than that, there's something you can do at home easily. And uh, you know hope this video helps. If it did hit like, hit subscribe, we really appreciate it. And next video hoping to get a windshield that I'm supposed to get for Father's Day. <laughs> So I think I saw it come in, I saw the box, but my wife hit it. So hopefully next week I'll have my windshield in and I'll do a video on that and that will help on my commute. So once again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. And as always, have a great day.